like you've been busy. Out of breath. I've been moving. I've been moving rapidly. That was two hours. I bet you could see that in 30 seconds. Got a lot of work done. Look at the front of the car. It's radically different. Wow. Yeah. So in the bug, I think sometimes people call these like the kidney beans or something because it's uh, a shape that's in the hood. So we're going away from that VW Baja bug look, you know. So I took that out. This is a couple layers of fiberglass and then filler. So this will be perfectly smooth with the little raised emblem in the center. Then in the bottom, I took the big square shape out that would have held the license plate. So that was a considerable amount of touching up just to get to this point. Not very exciting information, but in the uh, time lapse, whether you caught it or not, I was using the Sawzall blade as a file. So uh, some of the stuff you saw working through it, I apply the filler. As it starts to set, it's like a very uh, malleable sort of plastic. I take the Sawzall blade and shave it off. That creates these really coarse lines. See through here how it just scrapes? So that maps the surface. Uh, and that's what I was doing between the air tool and the hand sander and the Sawzall blade. First, I would have the marks from spreader. I would spread it out and you have all these lines from the different strokes of the spreader. So I'd cut those off with the Sawzall blade and begin to map the flatness that I need. And using the other tools, we can go through the process some other time. But what it ends up with is this nice, nice transition between the two panels and uh, the flatness of the hood and the front nose piece too. Uh, the roof is the same process, but right now it's just roughed out. This is going to need a ton more work to get to the position that these are in. Uh, I'm going to stop at 36 grit with all of this fabrication because this ain't bodywork time. This is just leveling up the surfaces to take a look. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I was waiting for you to ask a question. Did you just time out? <laughs> you ever block sand for two hours straight with a 36 grit log board? <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> Nothing's wrong with me. Look at this front grill. This was on the BGW kit. So it had the wagon roof and then this funky uh, Willie's style nose, the hood. So this is a part of the original kit, and I was in the back 40, and I'm like, man, that's weird. If you're on Insta or Facebook, you saw this mocked up, but I'm going to mock it up right now. Real time. Look at this. You thought it looked like a weird little angry robot face before? Talk about the face only a mother could love. I don't know, there's a debate in there somewhere. You got any opinion? Did that work? I like it. It gives it character. It looks like an angry robot. It looks like a face for sure. Well, I mean, there is a face in the back and now there's one in front. <laughs> Something to think about. Back and wait. What's bugging me most is this. That's not going to fly in the finished paint job at all. Would you agree? I completely agree with that, yeah. You concur? So let's fix that today. Where we're at is uh, the transition. Say that again, where we're at. Where we're at is the transition from the Ford style fender into the Baja Bug nose and fender. This is all going to be molded one piece. The whole nose is going to tilt off and open. So I'm going to keep this separate, but I want to connect this in a more graceful manner. Number of ways to go about that. I was thinking I would just find some kind of a curved shape and just mock it up there and see if it works. What do you got for curved shapes? Anything? I got an old tire over here. How about this old flower pot? That looks like a curve. Does that radius not look like, does that look too tight? 
Yeah, that makes it look it, a lot. I want, think it is a little too tight. They want a much bigger circle. This is just a representation of the curve we're looking for. I could go bending up a bunch of pieces of steel, but if you got a bunch of garbage laying around. I like that. It's more gentle, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And because we're not going to put any steel, we used steel in the back because I wanted to tie in the sides of that body. But this is 100% fiberglass and it doesn't have a lot of potential for uh, expansion or contraction. So being that that tire is about the curvature we want, I know those are about maybe 27 inches. Let me look around. Hello. <laughs> Found this piece of rake line in the back and it's already coiled up. I think we'll be able to roughly translate that into that tire diameter. I'm just going to spread it out and compare it. Again, not rocket science, just a loose representation. There it is right there. Bada bing. Got a mind of its own. So, how do you feel about that? Again, this is just drawing in space. this. We want this to connect here. Cut that stuff off in a minute. Very scientific. How's that look? I like it. Not terribly uneven. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Kind of like if you were to draw, right? If you were going to do pinstriping, you'd do this. Mm -hmm. Right? That works for me. That easy sometimes. Got some more of this foil tape I use so much. Why do you use foil tape? Um... It's reflective and it looks cool. <laughs> good, good enough reason for me. It's metal. Uh, the uh, plasticky tapes stretch a lot. This doesn't stretch at all. So mm. it's actually like aluminum foil with a sticky side. So if we're doing this type of thing, it's worked pretty well for me. Just to put a little holder on that, set that up there. And now I want to... Uh, cut all this filler out because we want to go fiberglass to fiberglass and this is in the way. There's glass under here so bear with me for a second when I just gouge that out. I'm just creating a little bit of a shelf to support that fiberglass so it doesn't just fall on the ground. This rod will come out 100% in the end. So it's just like a... Uh, An armature of sorts. Just so our work doesn't fall on the ground. You could do this with regular tape for sure on this small of a surface, but when you get to the longer spans of uh, distance, the lack of stretching in the foil really helps. Okay, one or two more there. Sweet. All right, I'm gonna get a razor knife and cut this back now. Got a nice push into the fiberglass, but I wanna make sure that I make contact, so I'm gonna trim that back a little bit lower. So, 
get the maximum surface shown so I can uh, get a good adhesion to that. Uh, again, the back side of this entire project will be finished. So what you're seeing here is a really raw, deep, cavernous shape uh, that will get sanded back from the inside and finished. So this is just, again, the prototype that I mentioned in other videos. It's just to get something to work with. Uh, this is a pretty small area. So I'm not even going to use the fiberglass uh, resin that we've been using. I'm going to mix up kitty hair and laminate it in with fiberglass mat. So this is going to be way strong with solids. And I'll do that right now on the palette. Back to our messy palette. Getting a little more character every day. Cut up some glass mat. I think I might even have some sections. This is going to be like a very dense paste, like mega kitty hair. Actually, I think there was a product called Gorilla Hair, I'm not sure, which was like even coarser than kitty hair. So we're going into that range. That's good to start. I think that'll get us in the league. We'll do one laminate. In a second, and I'm going to mix this batch up really hot so it's just right now. So, when we were doing that work in the last episode, we were all gloved up and respirated up. And one of the things I was describing is I try to never touch the material. So, that was my issue with not wearing gloves. I pretty much use the tools by the handle and don't. Get it on the fingers. But if you're just learning, wear gloves. That's a lot of catalyst. Set it in there. So you can see it's pretty fibrous, but we're going for the mega fiber enhancement. This is like how I make Jamie's favorite soup when she says, go in the kitchen and mix that. Or no, what do you say? I ask you to stir the soup. <laughs> and I'm like, potatoes, <laughs> corn, peas, it's all and, the same mush. And then I come back and all the delicately cooked vegetables. It's turned into a puree. Pretty much. Pureed soup. So that was in our first year of marriage. <laughs> yeah. Jamie's ready for cuisine. I'm like, let's eat. <laughs> I love it. it that is a great. true story. I had to call you out on that. I was like, we it's need like, delicate did vegetables. I, did I not just stir? <laughs> Look at that. You should see you make a martini. Shaken and stirred. So look at all this fibrous and deluxe ruby material because it's going to go on thick. We need to fill up that, that cavity just to get to a surface height so again a lot of this will be cut out from the backside but gotta start with something what is the name of that fine dish which one the one i stirred so delicately i don't remember because i've made so many different so many soups awesome and yeah so see I'm not touching that material at all again. knowing that this will slop down because gravity is unavoidable start up here and I want to be sure to adhere to the underside you know if you just lay it it'll have a chance to have air bubbles so I like to work any material in like that just to get it get it familiar get it wet with the uh, resin that's in there also gets any dust out of the cracks and this is most important on the fiberglass not on the foil because the foil is going to get torn out too. It's a suspensory armature. So push it so it's becoming friends with the other fiberglass.
Perfect. It looks so much better. It really does. It looks like Oscar the Grouch. Yesterday we had the blob. We were dressed as Oompa Loompas together. That's correct. Great day. In reality, YouTube history. All right, so this stuff, you see, it doesn't even have a lot of liquid to spare, which is good. That's it. Let's start to set this into position. So you can see that that wire and everything, that's all it's there to do is a temporary holder so we can get this fuzz into shape. And I'm able to wipe off on the end of it. See, that just puts a little edge to it. And a lot of this does have the same effect as model making. Uh, once this cures, the fiberglass will have that shape of the steel rod embedded in it. So you could almost go to the back side of this and follow that as a perfect uh, reference point for this curve we've created. But I'm going to leave the wire until the bitter end and then cut it out. Once it's glued in place, I'm just going to cut it off. It'll get torn out. End of the scenario. Cool. So just like I did with the brush, or just like we did with the brush, mm -hmm. see I'm kind of tamping it down, trying to make it a little, trying to make it as dense as possible. That's the strength. The strength is in the fibers, not in the resin more dense you make it. They make this cool little rolly wheel tool where you just kind of wheel it in, but I don't have that. That's a lot of catalyst. And some dust. We're getting somewhere. It's really starting to get sticky now. There's always like this magic moment with fiberglass or body filler where it's like it's formable to a point and it doesn't stick to the tool. And then shortly after that, it's going to rigidity. So there it is. That one it's starting to pull. See, once it gets that sticky, it just starts to pull apart. All right, I'm gonna let that kick off. I'm gonna mix up another batch of just straight kitty hair and stick it right on top while this is heating up. Grab that brush and just tamp it a little more even though they're dried out. Another reason I'm doing it this way is because we're out of acetone. I gotta go to the store. Cool. I like that. All right. While it's setting, I'm gonna mix up another batch of kitty hair and schlock it right over that. Yeah, that curvature looks good. I like it. I'm happy.
See? Mm -hmm. That's the dance. There it goes. See how it gets more rigid? It's just about there. Common mistake that uh, beginners would make, and I've done it so many times, is you ask too much of the material. You try to get it just right in the first application and you're going to end up pulling off a big glob just as it's setting. So patience, young grasshoppers. Even if it's not perfect on the first swipe, you can sand it back when it's dry and reapply. That's a catchphrase. Cool. Got one little bit extra, so that's what I've been doing here on the roof with all the extra material every time I have a little... Uh, bit left over. Just set it on the surface. Put it in the mix and nothing goes to waste. Yeah, so at this point when it's just about hardened, you can see it's really sticky and I do always a little cleanup. Just go through, try to take off any drips and wait. Also with the palette, clean it up. Cool. Now once it's just about there, cleaning the tools is just that easy. Look, Ma, nothing on the hands. Really is a system. me sanding dirty. I did all this I did all the sanding with the face mask on. It's because I had to say something. And that was this. Always wear your PPE. I think I'm done. I, I caught a little caught a little metal in the leg. These are battle scars. Feet's coming off. But hey that's why they're disposable. I think I got one more day out of this so I'm gonna preserve it. So that's all the sanding for right now. You can see that this hardened up just fine. I was able to take this piece and I cut it off and sanded it and all I did was twist it. So now we have the same template for the other fender. We'll just reverse it. So I'll save that. Oh, I got wires coming out of me. So how we're going to finish this off is just a quick layer of the lightweight filler. And we're going to get on the back fender. And mix this up. Funny, some of the comments on the other video, I put so much catalyst 
in that batch of kitty hair. And one guy was like, oh, I couldn't stand the suspense. The timer was going. They cut the commercial. <laughs> Filler waits for no one. All that stuff. That's the excitement of it. When it's really cold like it is this morning, this stuff is thick and it's starting to pull the little spreader board apart. Live and learn. And I cut a piece of steel for the next episode or for the next event. So I got modified work table at the moment for this last thing. This will be exciting. These are the true struggles. Starting to make a mess. Never easy, is it? Handle out of the schmutz. Let's see. I think we can work here. Try to recover, shall we? Always exciting. the mark of a professional. Not doing it perfect, just knowing how to get out of trouble. Somebody also said, knead the filler, don't stir. Duh. But when it's as thick as it is, you gotta do something to get that catalyst mixed up. So here we are, both stirring and kneading. But when you get into the final top coat of filler, yes, you don't want any pinholes. So make your best effort to knead. All right, that looks good. Now, because we're into a little tighter of a contour, I'm gonna not use these large steel spreaders. I'm gonna get into the mini spreader. See what we got. Move this a little closer. All right, again, we got some little, pretty deep uh, low spots here. So I just kind of prime them. So you just get the material on, get everything so that there's no dry spots. All right, and then grab another spatula full and spread it. Just like that. Again, it's usually not perfect on the first try. It's really cold this morning, so we got plenty of time to work. Cool. I like it. A little action needed in that corner. And how you load this thing is a lot to do with the results you're going to get. See, I got a mess here. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times before I'll even put it down, just get all that mess off. And I just want to pick it up on the end. I want to deposit it in there. So I'm gonna swipe it, pull it up. Like that. Again, this is pure sculpture. This isn't uh, perfection. It's just ideas and refinement. Cool, so that's gonna set up. I think we're onto the back fender. Sweet, so from the fiberglass mat to the kitty hair to the lightweight filler, that's the process. Got a pretty big blob of that left over, so I'm gonna send that to the roof project. So, I think there's a nice low spot over there. So 
all this hard pushing down is really just getting the surface wet because it's uh it's been dry for quite a while optimally this would be a fresh cut of 36 grit paper but it's pretty scored up as it is so just going for it And that's the thing with all this filler that I'm doing over the whole car. I'm just going to keep working this roof slowly with every bit of leftover material from task at hand. Keep bringing it up. When the undersurface is dry, you'll be able to see it pull away. So that's why I keep scraping it like this. See this area here? That's not held. Mm -hmm. So that's why you can see as I pulled it across, it just pulled up. So that's not going to bond at all. So then I come in, scrape it. There it is. Now it's wet. And then kind of smooth out where you came in. And I've seen guys on YouTube where they they pull this like perfectly flat with their spreaders. That's a skill that I'm not here for right now. Cool. Onto the back. Again, the magic of YouTube prevails. Somebody commented, oh, I love the little flip on the back of the fender. Imagine if there was a little flip. I think they called it a, a I don't know, a tail fin or something like that. But imagine a little tail fin off the back of the body just so it didn't look chopped off, so it had that detail here. And I was thinking, heck yeah, I like that idea. So I took a piece, that's what that steel is over there. I cut a piece of one and a half inch wide, and then I put it in the sheet metal break, bent it over, and then clamped it shut. So you can see it's double. All right, so it's two layers thick of 20 gauge. And see that three quarter inch matches the width of that little detail on the fender. So I was thinking, yeah, if I just weld this to the steel here and blend that in, it's got that same little detail and it makes it look a little more uh, finished, I, I suppose. So how do you transfer that? Does it go down like that and then back up? I don't think so. So looking at this here, right, so this. So it could get really complicated like a puzzle piece, right, where it follows the steel down turns here and then comes up to that or anything in between, right? So I was like, what if it just, you know, what if we had two levels? What if this came into there, just did a little turn right to there. And then this whole fender, none of this was here. This whole thing, this is the surface right there. Ooh. Simplify the whole process. This valley was bugging me because this looked so high up. But now if the whole thing's high up, hey, that's your height. How do you feel about that? I like it. I mean, how do you feel about that? I like it. It's really cool. You know, great minds think alike. <laughs> so right here, we're going to want to turn that, right? I think a pretty tight radius. So I'm going to hold this for a moment and walk towards the vise. See, that's why I was holding it. Now we have where we want the radius. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I'm thinking, let me put that in. We got two of those. Put these two pins together, side by side. We'll grab on that one. Come on, pins, back right. So that is one of the most rudimentary bending tools you can create. I'll put this in here, right? And it might flex it, I don't know, let's see. Ready for the bend? It's where the action happens. Hopefully we don't kink it. It's kinking. Okay, there it is. It kinked. I'm not happy with that. Let's try it again. See, this is where the control of the metal really counts. 
what it did is as I pulled it, it pulled it out of the tool and just folded it over instead of bending it. So control is the name of the game. How are we going to control it? Clamps. I'm going to take this clamp and I'm going to lock it to the piece of steel as a stopper so it doesn't slide out. I think right about there. So now it won't go through. And then these aren't spaced that tight. So I'm going to put a clamp here to hold that. And this is all stuff that the big tubing bender uh, provides for in its construction with all those pins and dies, etc. But this flat strap, it's just because it's doubled over that it was kinking. And that's cool. We'll work it. Yeah. So I'm gonna pull that in. I'll hit it. And now I bet we'll get better results. Control. Look at that. Didn't even kink. That's the mark of a professional knowing how to get out of trouble. Cool. I like that. A little hammer work, that'll come right in. So that should be up a little bit. That'll come over. Maybe I could just do that. Yeah. Then I'm gonna want to come in right about here and bend it again. Let's see if we can't do that by hand, because that's more graceful. Curve. Yeah, there it goes. And then see, it's going to twist. It's got a clock like this. There we go. Coming together. We get some pliers and start to dress it up a little. This is going to have uh, kitty hair all over it, so the metal finishing doesn't have to be perfect. We're just looking for this rigid edge. Yeah. Hit that with the rubber hammer on the anvil a little bit. Get that out. I brought both. Might be the rubber, might be the steel. Let's see what happens. No rubber. There it is. Yeah, it just mellows that out a little bit. Cool. There it is. Yeah, so it's coming in like that. Straight out to the fender. I like that. It's real simple. You can see the apex of the fenders right here. So I'm going to cut this here. I think because it's open, I think I'm going to hammer it right over that fender. I like that. So I'm just going to notch this a little bit. I get my cutting tool figured out. that let's check it out that's our mark i'm going to come in like this
How you liking me now? Let's get the welder. <laughs> I'm gonna put a quick tack on this and just see how it looks. Stand back moment. There's that steel rod buried in here, if you remember. So I'm going to have to sand back that fiberglass pretty dramatically to uh, get that to bond, but... Get some air on that, slow it down. Just like I did the visor in the front, uh, I focus on the part that I really want to form, and then I build out the rest. So I'll probably do this right side, then a left, then I'll just build the center, tack it together. This is going to get one rivet through here, and then I'll, I'll glass right over it. All right, a little tap to get that flushed up. All right. Get them together. Squeeze on this. I'm going to put a little countersink on this. That way that rivet doesn't stick up proud. It's just stuck in there. Quick sand on that. We'll lay up some fiberglass. Cool. So, at this point, I don't want to commit to attaching it to this fiberglass piece here if you can dig it, because this has got to come off so I can do that. So this is uh, going to be in here permanently, but for now it is another armature. Uh, I'm gonna set up a release right here. I'll get into that in a second, but that way when I want to take the fender or the roof off, I'll simply cut through the steel right here. I'll leave that showing, and then I can weld it back together at the final event. So uh, for a release, I'm just gonna tape this, because the filler and glass will stick to the tape, but the tape won't stick to the body. I mean, it'll stick, but it won't stay stuck. Does that add up? Captain. Yes. Yes, it does. See? That's what I like. Seal of approval around every turn. And then again, just like the front fender, all that underneath stuff gets cut out. That's why everything is able to be unbolted. I don't have to worry about uh, detailing the underside in advance. Oops. Looks like it's going to come in right about there, I believe. In there. I'll have to cut this off. That way I can glass to this, and this will be raised by that point. Oh, 
Okay, now, Arts and Crafts Hour. Fun with a straight edge and a marker. Here we go. This is what we're looking to accomplish. We got this nice straight edge here, right? So, we want to trace this down. So we're pretty much like this. Something in that order. So it flips up. All right. Yeah. Fortunately, I have plenty of this foil tape. I thought it's almost running out though. So, I'm going to stick it below here because we want it to have a decent amount of grab. As I mentioned, this stuff doesn't flex, so I can just let it sit like that. As long as it doesn't come unstuck. Oof. So see how it's just going to create a little tray to lay the material on. A little bit right there. One guy said, Building fiberglass cars. It ain't a real car unless it's metal. Somebody else is like, uh, what's going on there? It's like, it's fiberglass. Everything's going to be fiberglass. Okay, so you can see, this would be a good start to it. And I do want to attach it to the steel here. So I'm gonna cut back on the tape. That way I can get some bonding to the steel. I know fiberglass and steel are not friends, but I'm talking about just getting it to hold so I can get in there and cut back on this surface because the kitty hair does bond to steel pretty darn well. And I also have that other magic bottle of stuff from Evercoat. Cool. So I'm gonna lay this. The process is nothing new. It's the same thing we've done before. I'm gonna uh, mix up some resin, and lay a couple pieces of actual glass mat in here, and then laminate it. I think my statements are out for that. Sweet. So you'll notice this is not the lasagna strategy that we had been using. I noticed that. Yeah. What strategy would you call this one? Well, this is the more pro approach. This is how they would make a surfboard. They cut the material to fit and then swab on the juice. It's going to be a first try at this area because it could fall apart if I went too heavy. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of that resin and I'm going to put it in place and just kind of set it in motion on the surface. So I stepped over there and did the catalyzing event, waiting for this to turn the color. And I'm just going to pour it in there and start to squeegee it around. Because I noticed that the mat, if you were to cut that shape, move it to the table, and then apply this, the mat changes shape. So I don't want it to change shape. I want it to stay right there. And firm up so we can do the work. 
All right. So again, with the gravity thing, I'm going to start at the top. This is quite a bit of resin for this amount of space. But I don't want to have to push it too hard because I don't want it to all fall apart. Just trying to get some kind of structure to start. Buy me a pancake. Sweet. I'll slush it all around. Another person chimed in and said they uh they tried to do a bunch of fiberglass on their dune buggy and were unsuccessful with that. I'm interested to know why. Hopefully this video will help. Uh, you can see it's a lot of patience and uh, technique to a point, but it's not. You know, this isn't a master class in anything, but you can see we're getting results. And you can as well. So this is the thing about bodywork. This is where it gets redundant. What you're seeing here was the creative idea of the shape of the fender and how it's going to progress. And the rest is just what you saw on the front. It goes on and on and on. So that being said, you'll see how this fender will just be one massive panel right through here and it'll just flow up and it'll have the same lip detail that will transfer into the back of the roof. So I didn't over catalyze this. It's really chilly this morning. That's the start. Probably see you after all the rest of this process is done. There's going to be white suits. There's going to be dust masks. There will be sanding. Come back next time, won't you?